his service. And uh, Reverend Steele is going to lead us uh, in a uh, in a song here in just a minute. But um, I uh, I have a couple of uh, people that I wanted us to remember to pray for as we open up tonight. Okay. And uh, first of all, it's good to have Mike and Jackie back. Amen. And, uh, we're, we're so thankful and we appreciate. God keeping his hands on you and yes, we pray that God continue to bless your life and your marriage yes. and everything. And we're glad to have you back. We did miss you. Yes. Amen. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and we're thankful for that. Yes. Amen. But there's several people that have requested prayer. All right. And uh, Priscilla, who uh, has a big sister, now Priscilla uh, comes every once in a while. She's not able to come to every service. And, um, uh, she has asked for prayer for her sister. She has a big sister named Nadine. And uh, God bless you, brother. She has a big sister named Nadine who's, who's struggling with stage four cancer. And uh, so uh, we're going to pray for Priscilla's sister Nadine as we open service tonight. And then uh, my neighbor uh, that stays right over us, she had to fly down to Florida quickly because her daughter is having surgery due to cancer. Mm -hmm. I believe it's due to yeah. cancer as well. And so her name is Heather. Her name is Heather. So Nadine and Heather, and then Aaron has requested prayer for his daughter. She's had successful surgery. He just wanna make sure God continues to touch her and uh, keep his hands upon her. Mm -hmm. So we are gonna pray for Aaron's daughter mm -hmm. as well. And then Reverend Steele uh, was saying that Request the prayer for his mom, which we love, Mama Steele, and uh, we just want whatever her need is. Yes. Amen. We just want God to to work things out for Mama Steele. All right. Yes. And so with that, let's all stay. Let's go to Lord in prayer. Yes. Amen. Father, we pray tonight for these that are suffering, people that are, are dealing with illnesses. God, I pray that you move by your spirit. I pray that you touch Aaron's daughter, that you move in Nadine's life, in Heather's life, God, in Miss Mama Steele's life. I just pray, God, that you move throughout the church, bless the service, meet every need, accomplish your will. God, the Holy Ghost, we pray. God, you're faithful. God, you're wonderful. And we just thank you, God. We just thank you tonight for the privilege and the honor of being your child. Lord, we're so thankful that we're your children tonight. And when we have a need, we can come to you. The Bible says, come boldly to the throne of grace, that you might find help in the time of need. And God, we pray, not only that, that you be with my family during the loss of my uncle. I be with my mom and my her siblings and the rest of my family, God, comfort them, we pray. And I just thank you and I praise you. God, we honor you. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for the Spirit of God. Why don't you just go ahead and worship him? The presence of God is here tonight. The presence of God is here to meet everybody. Touch every heart right now. I feel God working. I feel God moving. I feel God dealing with the situation. I feel God handling it. Lord, we thank you for handling the situation. God, we thank you for working it out by the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah, God, we pray.
No matter how devastated I've been in my life, no matter how much tragedy I may have had to deal with, I can still say that God has been gracious. God has been gracious and God has been merciful. And things could have been worse if it had not been for God. I can really say that. And then and even when I was dealing with something, God was merciful and gracious even in the situation. Amen. To where he kept his hands upon us. Amen. We've been through so many things up and down on the road and, and, and throughout our lives. And some of you have testimonies too. Everyone behind every face is a soul. And everybody has a story to tell, don't you? Mm -hmm. Amen. About maybe it be your childhood. Maybe it was a, a, a relationship you was in. Maybe it was a situation you got caught up in or some circumstances. Some of it may have been your fault. Sometimes it might not have been your fault. I'm just saying we all have a story to tell. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that is, is, is um, one thing is level with everybody is that we need God. Amen. We need God. Oh, yes. Amen. I don't care how high you are, how low you are. Oh, yes. I don't care if you're rich or poor. Even rich people need God. Yes. Amen. It doesn't matter. Because you know what? If you have to go to the doctor and you have cancer, money cannot cure cancer. Yes, sir. Money helps, but it cannot cure and being poor either. Amen. But it takes the hand of God. We thank God for medicine. We thank God for doctors and nurses and, and all of the things that have advanced over the years. But at the end of the day, it's amazing, isn't it, how that you can go to the doctors. They can uh, diagnose you, uh, go through a diagnosis, prognosis, and, and all the things that they have to do to let you know what, what the problem is. And then once they let you know what the problem is, then they set you up with a plan to fix it or to correct it, right? Yeah. Usually, they set you up with a plan to fix it. But after all that's said and done, then it still takes God. Don't it? <laughs> think about it. Uh, if, if, you have, if you have surgery, right, thank God for doctors that do surgeries. Once the surgery is done, if God don't touch you, you're not going to heal. Yes. Now, think about it. A farmer can go out and break up the ground and plant and water and fertilize, but they still depend upon God to grow it. Yes. Amen. They can't make it grow. God makes it grow. Right. You can't heal. You, 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 you get cut. You can treat it. You can put stuff on it. But you still have to wait for God to heal. Yes. Amen. Amen. It takes God in your life. Yes, sir. And people don't even understand that. They're so busy living their life and doing their thing. Don't you know we need God? Amen. We need God. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I'm going to tell you, there have been many, many times in my life to where I needed God. As I stood over my father when he died in a car wreck. Man, it took everything I had. Mm -hmm. It took God. Are you with me? Yes, sir. When we walked into the funeral home for the first time with my wife and I, when I, when I saw my mother-in-law laying in the casket, it took the hand of God. Yes, sir. And uh, and all and then my nephew last year who was brutally murdered. And uh, and all and I'm just saying, so many times we deal with things in life. I remember I told you about this young man that was coming to church and uh, he killed himself and we had to, his mother asked us if we could go downstairs with her to identify him and, and, just, and just to scream. A mother scream when she sees her son for the first time behind that glass. I mean, I'll never forget that. It takes God to help us. Amen. I need God. Make something happen and do all this stuff. When you need to trust God. Mm -hmm. Go 
Don't you need to work, do things you need to do, take care of your business, all that. But sometimes after you've worked and, and you organize and you try to do everything you can to get your business right, sometimes things still don't pan out. And that's when you gotta say, God, yes. God, I've been trying to do the right thing. God, I've been endeavoring to straighten out my life. Now I need you to make up the difference. Amen. Amen. We have to trust God tonight. Amen. And if you're not trusting God, you're in bad shape. You're in bad shape if you're not trusting God. Amen. Uh, God bless you. We got a lot going on. I think there's practice tomorrow. Uh, choir practice, praise team practice uh, tomorrow. Also, I think, uh, Brother Steele, I think you and Brother Nick are supposed to do something back here. Finish up that painting back there. Appreciate that. And I uh, appreciate God. God is blessing the church. And I uh, appreciate that. The paint job back there. Some of you have seen it. Man, it looks look so different. <laughs> we got a lot of compliments from people. We got a lot of compliments from people when they saw those pictures from, from Sunday. And they see that the, 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 the fellowship hall is painted. And uh, they were like, oh, wow, that's nice. You know, and uh, so also... Uh, I had, while, while all that was going on, Brother Nick went up, I was telling him we need to do something with the lighting upstairs. And um, we went up there and looked at it, and he was like, I'll talk to my boss and everything. And um, and when it was all said and done, Reverend Steele met him over here at the church, and God, they donated the light fixtures to the church. Yes. from what Brother Mick was telling me, we'll be able to brighten them and yeah. you know, darken and brighten, you know, with the, yeah. what you call that, with whatever yeah. that everybody yeah. is. Yeah. There you go. Y'all know what you said. But whatever that is, that's what it is. Yes, he sent the picture to show Yeah, he did send a picture on the little chat where it's what, it, what it's going to look like. Yeah. And uh, when it gets done with it, it's a real blessing. Amen. Amen. It's going to really brighten it up back there for the kids. Especially if you can get that done, then once we get done with the painting, yes. and then do something with that floor up there. And we just want to make that make this a better place. Yes, sir. Make this a better place. Yes, sir. Amen. I appreciate you. I appreciate everybody yes. that pitched in and helped Amen. make my wife's birthday special. Yes, sir. And all the work that everybody's been doing, yes, just it's just it's, it's overwhelming. Yes. It's overwhelming. Amen. The faithfulness of God's people. Yes. Of God's people. Amen. 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 And so, so we remember uh, we pray for Aaron's daughter, Heather, my neighbor's daughter, Reverend Steele's mom, uh, Priscilla's sister. Uh, sister Nadine, and we're just believing that God is going to work that all out. Amen. Amen. I'd like to minister to you tonight um, from a very, very familiar portion of Scripture found in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6. And it reads familiarly, familiar to you. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. That's how it works. You can't go halfway. You can't go three quarters. You can't go seven eighths. You got to give it all to God. Yes, Amen. You got to trust God with everything you have. And lean not unto thine own understanding. We all have thoughts, don't we? And sometimes we think we have a thought. But anyway. Um, so Pastor, I think I have a thought. But anyway. And lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. Now, you know, we can have an altar call on that by ourselves right here. <laughs> I can just shut down right here, right now, and we can just come down right here and all have a prayer meeting. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. Do we acknowledge him in everything that we do? Can you say that everything that you do, God is okay with? Can you do it in clear conscience?
conscience? Can you do it with no guilt attached? Can you do it to say, it's okay. I, I believe that if God was with me, I could still do this. It's like that old story about if Jesus came to your house. You ever, you ever seen that before? If Jesus came to your house, would you watch the same things you watch? Uh, would you have the same conversations on the phone that you always have? Would you, you know, would you, you know, would you treat your spouse or your husband, or would you uh, 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 discipline your children the same way? And on and on and on, if Jesus came to your house, it's something to think about. But you know, believe it or not, he is there. Yes, sir. <laughs> you might not realize that, but he's there. He's there. And the Bible says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall what? Direct thy paths. In all thy ways. That's the verse that we want to especially notice tonight. Just give me a few minutes of your time. Give me a few minutes of your time. We want to grow our night service. Okay, yes, we want to grow our nice services. I believe with God's help we can do it. I believe that we can continue. Our, our Sunday morning services are growing. And uh, we even had some people that hadn't been out in a long time came Sunday as well as the regulars that we had. We had a really good crowd Sunday, but I want to keep growing uh, uh, the night nice services. And, and, uh, and, and Sunday night we had a wonderful service. Uh, but uh, it, it was like especially dedicated to Brother James's grandson, his daughter and grandson was here, and it was like God just, it was just something special about this young man, he's been in and out of the hospital ever since he was born, amen, and then him being here, it was like the anointing of God was upon him, and I believe that he's going to grow up with God having something for him to do, I really believe that, I really believe that, and I'm not just saying that, but anyway, in all thy ways, verse 6, which is my preaching text tonight, in all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall what? Direct thy paths. And God knows I need him to tell me what to do. I made enough mistakes in my life. I've had enough failures in my life. I'm not going to sit up here and tell you that I've always done what God wanted me to do. That's a lie. And if you'll be honest too, we'll all, we can all say, God, forgive me for the times that I didn't get direction. God, forgive me for the times when I could have got some advice, but I didn't get advice. I just went ahead and did whatever I wanted to do. And I suffered the and you still had to end up praying in them, you did. You still had to end up asking God to help you. Yes, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. And he shall what? Direct thy path. Are you on God's path tonight? Are you really doing what God wants you to do? If you were to die right now, could you say before you close your eyes, I'm doing what God wants me to do. Can you say that and die right now? I'm preaching on a message entitled God's GPS system. God's GPS system. In all my ways, what? Acknowledge Him. And he said, what? Direct. <laughs> if you let, if you're gonna let God direct you, you need somewhere to go, don't you? <laughs> you think God just gonna send you off into the wild blue yonder? You think God just gonna put you out in the middle of nowhere? You think God just gonna send you out to a hot rock in the middle of the Mojave Desert? Anytime that God directs your life, there's a particular place, there's a particular situation, there's a particular circumstances surrounding it. God has a will for your life tonight. And are you following God's GPS? Amen? Let us pray. Sir, would you pray?
realize, you see, the only way you can really find yourself in the will of God is that you turn your will over to him. You got to stop doing what you want to do. Amen. You got to stop just uh, saying, I'm my own man. I'm my own woman. No, you're not. And if you are, you're not in God's will. Because my Bible tells me that once you've been saved, once you've committed your life to God, you're bought with a price. Yeah. And the Bible says you're no more your own. It says that. You are bought when, when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You are now purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. You are no more your own. And now you say, God, not my will, but thy will be done. Slip your hands up and thank God right now. Hallelujah. You start following God. You start obeying. Amen. You think I have nothing to do with it? If 
you love God and God's got a home in your life, you go obey God. I don't care how old you are. Don't give me that garbage. Anyway, God's GPS system in all that ways in knowledge you. And he shall what? Direct thy path. The GPS is known as the global positioning system. The global positioning system. It is a satellite based radio navigation system owned by the United States government. You didn't know that, did you? All this time you've been using GPS and all that. You know the government owned that? And it's part of the a Space Force. It's run by satellite and it's run by the Space Force, the United States Space Force. It is one of the global navigation satellite systems that provide geolocation. In other words, you can pinpoint where you are. Amen. Do you know where you are tonight? I hope so. Say, so, yeah, Pastor, you know what I said. I said to myself, <laughs> I said, you know, uh, you know what's so funny, Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown. Yeah. So he said, you know, I, he said, I said to myself, and myself said, hmm. <laughs> do you know where you are tonight? Do you know where you are? That provides geolocation through the GPS system. It can be determined your location, right? And time, the information was put in to the system. And it can be received anywhere on or near the earth. Isn't that something? Where there is an unobstructed line of sight to four or more GPS satellites. Now, most of us remember the garments and the, now which one, which, 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 which GPS, portable GPSs were the best? The Tom Tom. You don't even remember that, do you? The Tom Tom. The Tom Tom. I have a car, of course. And um, there's a guy that I work with that still works at the place that I used to work before God allowed us to go full time. Uh, I found out his name was Tom. I named that name Tom Tom. Amen. And uh, I, I always mess with him. Because he knew it, and you know exactly where you are. <laughs> and, that, that, and that name stuck with him. And there's another guy, I, I gave everybody a nickname. But, but anyway, the GPS system, how does it work? The key to the GPS system is to type in where you are. Now you can say, I want to go to Hawaii, I want to go to Alaska, I want to go to this place or that place, and all of that is fine and dandy. Or I want to go to where Sister April's from, or I want to go to where I want to go to where Frontier is from, or I want to go to uh, Atlanta. But the GPS cannot help you if you don't tell the GPS where you are. It's it's you. But once you type in or say speak to it, Siri. I can't tell you how many times my wife and I were driving down the road. I said, Siri, give me directions to such and such and so Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Trying to go visit somebody, trying to go see somebody. And everything. My wife and I had to go see a young lady yesterday. Was it yesterday? We had to go talk to a young lady. We were concerned about her. But I know where we know where she lives. We went there. The situation was kind of, we was really in the middle of kind of a very, very Areas, kind of dangerous situation, really. And we believe there were some other things going on, but we still stayed there and ministered and, and, and gave advice and, and talked to the young lady out of concern and everything because we don't want her to fall through the cracks. Yes, we, we don't want her to get messed up. Yes, and, um, and her boyfriend, he was, you know, he was kind of uh, carrying on a little bit, but I was even able to minister once he calmed down. 
Amen. Because one thing about it, I wasn't scared. I'm not saying I wasn't concerned. Yeah, I wasn't scared though. And when it was all said and done, he was like, oh, he's the man. I, he said, I'm scared. He, he, he almost got emotional. But when, yeah, he, he melted. When he first came down the steps, he was all, you know. But then when, when it was all said and done, he was standing over against the wall. Man, God broke him down. Yes, sir. Yeah, the first time he came, he said, that's how, that's how people get shot. He said it like that. And I, I didn't tell you we just stand here. Amen. Because God sent us there yes. to check on the young lady. Amen. And uh, so I want it was all good. But GPS works when you you can you can put it out wherever you want to go. But it cannot help you until you put it in where you are. Right? Where you are. And all of us have experienced using GPS. We have a, some some cars have GPS systems. And then most cell phones now have a GPS system in it. And it's where you can work it that way. Amen. And once you determine where you want to go, that's fine, but you have to put your location in so it can tell you how far and what direction and all of these other things for the GPS. Don't you know God works the same way? You, in order for you to get to where you want to go in God, in order for you to reach your destination, in order for you to fulfill a vision, in order for you to fulfill a dream in God, you got to you got to realize where you are. Yes, amen. You say, I want to go to heaven. I want to live a successful Christian life. I want to be a man and a woman that God always desired for me to be. In order for that to happen, you've got to use God's positioning system. Yes. Uh, in all thy ways acknowledge him. And then he shall what? And he shall direct. If you want to know how to get to heaven, if you want to know how to live right, if you want to know how to reach your destiny in life, uh, you've got to work the GPS system. You've got to start acknowledging God. Uh, you've got to make God a valuable part of your life. Uh, you've got to stop this Acceptance, when you acknowledge, that means acceptance of the truth or the, accept, the acceptance of the existence of something. In other words, if you know that you want to go to heaven, if you know that you want to be the Christian that God wants you to be, if you know that you have a goal or you have a destiny, you, it starts with you acknowledging the truth uh, about yourself. Uh, are you in the position uh, that you need to be in uh, for God to give you direction? Uh, are you in listening position? Uh, are you in obedient position? Uh, are you in the position uh, to where uh, you have surrendered uh, your life to God? Uh, God's not going to give you the direction uh, if you're disobedient. Uh, God Uh, and I 
to him. You see, when you surrender your life to him, then it establishes your position. It establishes your location. It establishes your spiritual place so that now you're operating, you're working, you're existing and moving in God's global positioning system, God's spiritual system. I want to make sure my heart is right with God. I want to make sure my mind is cleaned up. And then number two, you have to determine where you want to go. Once you acknowledge that you need God's help, once you acknowledge that things are not the way it ought to be in your life, and then you make that right, then you get that straight, then you can say, God, this is where I want to go. This is where I want to go. Uh, you can type that in. The Bible says in Matthew 7, 13 and 14, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be that go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. You know, it's simply about being saved and being a sinner. That, that, it's just that simple. There's no need to try to dress it up. There's no need to try to use words to make it pretty. Amen. We don't need to spray no perfume on it. Why? That's the truth. You know what? Why is the gate? That's the gate. It's easy to run when you cry. It's easy to, to do what everybody else is doing. But straight is the gate. In other words, when you walk with God, you will have to unload some junk. Yeah. When you walk with God, you will have to get rid of some things. When you walk with God, you're going to have to get your life cleaned up. When you walk with God, you're going to have to unload uh, so that you can walk. Uh, that word narrow means straight. Uh, it means it, you, you can only get through that, but you have to unload to get through that. Yes, but why is the game? That means if you're going if you, if you to walk with the devil, if you're going to hell, you can carry all the loads you want. It's all the space you need. You, he'll make plenty of room for you. Amen. Whatever. You want to keep holding on to things. You want to keep sitting in the church thinking you done in God. You want to keep sitting in the church thinking everything's cool because you're getting by. You don't want nobody to tell you what you're doing is wrong. And all of these things. Then, then you can't follow God's GPS system. But when you type in heaven. When you type in being a Christian. When you type in. Now we 
we talked about God's GPS system, right? If you want to operate on God's system, that will give you direction. But as it is written, 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have it even entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Um, the Bible said, now you talk about a destination, right? We talk about, everybody wants to go to heaven. Everybody wants to say they're a Christian. Everybody wants to say they're serving God. But the Bible says, I have not seen, neither have ear heard, neither have they entered into the heart of man that the things which God has prepared for them that love them. But Brother Mike, check this out. Check this out. I'm so glad I got the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was sitting in my chair. I was sitting at the desk studying the day and uh, I was listening to a song and the spirit of God came over me and I just started praying in the Holy Ghost and just saying, God, I just want to worship you. God, I just want to praise you uh, because you're wonderful. Yes. I thank God for the Holy Ghost tonight. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Let me read this last verse. Because I have not seen nor ear heard, not had to enter into the heart of the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But he had revealed them unto us by his spirit. You know, people that have the Holy Ghost, do you not know that people that have the Holy Ghost know things that people don't have the Holy Ghost don't know? Uh, there are certain things that God will not reveal to you unless you have the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Think about it. He said, I have not seen. There's things that the eye have not seen, the ear have not heard, that have not even entered into the heart of people, uh, the things which God had prepared. But for those that have the Holy Ghost, the Bible said, but he has revealed it unto us. I know I'm going to heaven. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, sir. Because I'm operating. I'm using God's GPS system. I'm, I'm on my way to heaven now. Shouting hallelujah. Shouting glory. God, I know I'm your child. Because I'm on the operating system. I'm on God's GPS. Hallelujah. Beyond the shadow of a doubt, that everything is right between you and God. 